time for another chapter of Encyclopedia Brown Boy Detective and that's by Donald J. Sobel and this chapter is entitled The Case of Mirko's Grandson. Bugs Meanie and his tigers liked to spend rainy afternoons in their clubhouse. Usually they sat around thinking up ways of getting even with Encyclopedia Brown. But today they had met for another purpose, to cheer the boy detective on. Encyclopedia and Sally Kimball were about to meet in a battle of the brains. The Tigers hated Sally even more than they hated Encyclopedia. And with good reason, when Sally had moved into the neighborhood two months ago, the Tigers jumped to show off for her. She was very pretty and she was very good at sports. In fact, she got up a team of fifth grade girls and challenged the Tigers to a game of softball. The boys thought it was a big joke until Sally started to strike them out. She was the whole team. In the last inning, she hit the home run that won for the girls, one to zero. But the real blow fell on the Tigers the next day. Bugs was bullying a small boy when Sally happened to ride by on her bicycle. Let him go, she ordered. Hopping to the ground, Bugs snarled. The snarl changed to a gasp as Sally broke his grip on the boy. Before the other tigers knew what to do, Sally had knocked their leader down with a quick left to the jaw, so she hit him. Bugs bounced up and surprised and angry, he pushed Sally. Sally hit him again with a right to the jaw. Bugs said, ooh, and went down again. For the next 30 seconds, Bugs bounced up and down like a beach ball. By the fourth bounce, he was getting up a lot more slowly than he was going down. I'm going to make you sorry, he said. But his voice was weak, and he wore the sick smile of a boy who had taken one ride too many on a roller coaster. So, said Sally, she moved her feet and took careful aim. This, she said, aiming another blow, should take the frosting off you. Bugs landed on his back, flat as a 50-cent sandwich. Not until Sally had ridden away did he dare get up. Sally was not content to rest on her victories at softball and fighting. She aimed higher. She set out to prove she was not only stronger than any boy up to 12 years of age in Idaville, but smarter too. That meant outthinking the thinking machine. Encyclopedia Brown. The Great Battle of the Brains took place in the Tigers clubhouse. The two champions seated on orange crates faced each other. The Tigers crowded behind Encyclopedia. The girls softball team crowded behind Sally. That left just enough room in the tool shed to think. Everyone stopped talking when Peter Clinton, the referee, announced the rules. Sally has five minutes to tell a mystery. She must give all the clues, then Encyclopedia will have five minutes to solve the mystery. Ready, you two? Come here. These are the two champions as they're facing each other. So this is Sally on this side, and this is Encyclopedia Brown over here. And the girls' softball team is over there, and the boys are over here. Ready, said the girl champion. Ready, said Encyclopedia, closing his eyes. Go, called Peter, eyes on his watch. Sally began to tell the story. The great Mirko was the best trapeze artist the world had ever seen. People in every big city were thrilled by the wonderful performer swinging 50 feet above the ground. In the year 1922, Mirko died at the very height of fame. In Mirko's desk was found a letter. It was a will written by the circus star. The will directed that the star's money be put in a bank for 40 years. After 40 years, the money was to be taken out and given to Mirko's oldest grandson. If no grandson was alive, all the money was to go to Mirko's nearest relative, man or woman. Forty years passed. A search was begun. At last, a man was found in Kansas City who said he was Mirko's grandson. His name was Fred Gibson. He went to court to claim his inheritance. While the judge was listening to him, a tall woman in the back of the courtroom jumped up. She was very excited. The woman said she was the trapeze artist's grandniece. She kept shouting that the great Mirko was not Fred Gibson's grandfather. Therefore, the money was rightfully hers. The judge questioned the woman. He had to agree with what she said. 
She was Mirko's grandniece, and the great Mirko was not Fred Gibson's grandfather. Now, concluded Sally, who got Mirko's money, the tall woman or Fred Gibson? Sally wore a smile of triumph as she looked at Encyclopedia. The tool shed was still. The boys looked at their shoes. Had Sally beaten them again? Had Encyclopedia met his match? Encyclopedia had five short minutes to solve the brain twister. Slowly, the minutes ticked away. One, two, three, four. Encyclopedia stirred on his orange crate. He opened his eyes. He smiled at Sally. You told it very cleverly, he said. I nearly said the wrong person, but the answer is really quite simple. Encyclopedia rose to leave. The great Mirko's money went to Fred Gibson. Why? Hmm. Think about it. And if you know, tell the person nearby and I will read the answer in just a minute. The Solution to the Case of Mirko's Grandson Both the tall woman and Fred Gibson spoke the truth. Although the great Mirko was not his grandfather, Fred Gibson was the great Mirko's grandson. The great Mirko, as Encyclopedia realized, was a woman. She was Fred Gibson's grandmother, not her his grandfather. So he still got the money. Did you figure it out? I bet you did. You are an awesome detective.